everyone. Welcome to another episode of Woman Empowerment Series video podcast today with me, Farisha. And I am very honored to have a very special guest with me is Pauline. Hi, Pauline. How are you? Hi. Hi, Farisha. I'm doing very well. Thank you. And it's really How an honor you? for me to have you on my show, on my Woman Empowerment podcast. No, thank you for having me. Yes, and this is a podcast where I interview amazing and wonderful ladies from Malaysia. So Pauline, can you share us more about yourself? Yes, so I've been a journalist for about 12 years now. Um, I've been covering a variety of things in my journalism career. I've covered healthcare, politics, crime, court. Uh, I even worked with the DAP for a short while. Um, and I've got some corporate experience. I worked as a comms, um, comms manager for a national, multinational bank in Malaysia. And uh, most recently, I, am, I was a journalist with Age Singapore. Uh, so I, for the past two years, I've been in Singapore, but I'm returning to Malaysia soon. Um, aside to that, I am a writer. Uh, I do a little bit of podcasts myself, but not for myself. It was always with, with my company. Um, yeah, I am a Chevening Scholar. Uh, the Chevening is the uh, scholarship offered by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office uh, of the British Government. I am also the uh, winner of the A. Samad Ismail uh, Best Young Journalist Award 2013 from the Malaysian Press Institute. Okay, and the next question is, what is the most difficult moment, the most challenging moment in your career, and how do you overcome it? How do you overcome those challenges? <sighs> Where do I begin? So I, I started, well, it depends on what you mean by, you know, which stage of my career. I've had different stages and each stage has had different challenges. Um, I started my career at The Sun, The Sun newspaper in KL. And I was a news desk reporter and I covered the birthday rally, all five of them. Uh, well, not the first, just two, three, four and five. Um, and I think the challenges were the day-to-day -day and realizing that, you know, you had a responsibility to the people uh, to write the truth and to be as subjective as possible. Um, those were more like, you know, physical challenges, you know, like getting the story or chasing the story and writing well and dealing with bosses yelling at you, where's the story? Deadline in half an hour, you know? Um, but I think right now, the greatest, um, well, the second challenge in the second stage of my career was when I switched to corporate communications. And that was a huge switch for me because I'd been a journalist for so many years and so corporate life was really difficult for me. The nine to five, the bureaucracy, that was difficult, but I learned a lot. You know, I learned how to be on the other side of the fence. And I think right now my, my challenge in this third stage of my career is actually moving from a full-time journalism job, which I've always had into freelancing. So I'm starting up a little bit of a media consultancy of my own and uh, I'm moving towards becoming a freelance writer, a freelance comms consultant, freelance PR person in a way uh, with a specific focus on startups. So I really want to help startups. If there's one thing I've learned uh, in my past two years with Age Singapore is that startups often have real difficulty in finding people to do comms for them and they can't afford big PR companies. So, you know, this is an area I want to go into help them create their comms plans and help them to get the media coverage and how to communicate effectively with not only the clients, but, their, but the public as well. So this, I think, is the most challenging part for me, the instability, um, you know, how, how to transition from having full time to freelance. Yeah. And, and I overcome it simply by researching the hell out of it. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I speak to friends who've gone freelance. I, I talk to people who've done this for a while. Um, you know, I, re, I keep contacts with people, ask for help and ask for advice. When I can. Okay. And okay. the next question: What does woman empowerment means to you, in your own words? So empowerment means, I think, fundamentally, I think a lot of people mistake empowerment to mean when it comes to women empowerment to uh, be have equal equal rights to men, to be equal to men. But I think that's the wrong way of looking at it because then you're just always going to play catch up. I think the way to look at women empowerment is in having choices, right? The, the fundamental part of it is that women empowerment means having choices and the ability to make those choices, right? It's not about getting equal rights with men, it's about being able to have the same choices and the same opportunities in life. And more importantly, not to have this 
curtailed or not to have this denied to you simply because you're a woman. And that doesn't necessarily just apply to women. It also applies to minorities or people with disabilities, you know, to have access to the same kind of opportunities and choices in life. I think that ultimately is what women empowerment mean to me because choices to one woman will not look the same as choices to another. For example, women who choose to wear the burqa, women who choose to cover up, that should be their choice. Women empowerment is not um, asking them to remove the burqa. It is about giving them the choice to wear if they want to and the choice to wear if they don't. You know what I mean? It's to have freedom for yourself and to choose what happens to your body, to choose what happens to your life. Totally agree with you, Pauline. And uh, woman empowerment is also women supporting other women, supporting exactly. each other, you know, because there is no room for jealousy. There's no room for hate. You know, we empower and we support each other. And that's the way that it should be. Because, you know, when we're together, when we're together, we're stronger. We're stronger together. And, and that is how we have to empower and also motivate other ladies as well. Mm -hmm. I remember um, someone told me, I can't remember who it was exactly years ago, that um, she said, there is a special place in hell for women who don't help other women. <laughs> and I think that is absolutely true. Women don't help each other enough, you know? I th yeah. Okay, moving on to the next question. Who are the most inspiring women that you admire in Malaysia and also internationally? I think it's, I always get asked this question sometimes and I feel like there is no one person, but if I, because I think I admire and I look up to every woman, it's hard to navigate the world as a woman. I think this, this, is, a, this is a thing that our experience of life and how we move through it and how we move through society is quite different from a man, right? We have to think about things that men don't. You know, if I go to work and if I'm wearing something that's a little bit, you know, figure hugging, do I, men don't have to worry whether their shirts are too tight and it will give people the wrong impression. We do, you know, we don't, men don't have to worry when they're walking out at night, will I get mugged or raped or attacked, right? Men don't worry about that. We do. So for every, I admire every woman because we are all in this together and we, Collectively, I admire them for every woman who's struggling through something, the single mother who has to make ends meet for her child, um, or, you know, or, or the, the plus size woman just trying to survive social media being out there and being plus size and not have people send her messages to say, you're a fat person, you should die and things like that, because that happens. That happens. It happens a lot. You know, or women who, who put on a lot of makeup and you can get judged and things like that. That happens a lot. And these are only the superficial things. What about women who are, you know, being discriminated when it comes to birth control? What about women who are being discriminated when it comes to access to health care? You know, statistics have shown that women get poorer health care than men, you know, because doctors don't take their symptoms seriously, you know. Or what about women who are oppressed and, and forced to? you know, belong to a man as their property or women who still have female genital mutilation happen to them. So these are the things I think for me, if you ask me who do I am, I am my every woman just for surviving. You know, it's not an easy world. And I am saying this from my position as, as privileged woman, right? Being relatively middle income and, and being well-educated, not every woman has opportunities that I do. But the long, that's the long answer. The short answer <laughs> is my mom. I think my mom is the woman I admire most in the world. Um, you know, she, she, she went through a lot to bring us up and she was the sole breadwinner in my family for all my life. And she juggled that with a boss who was every stereotype of sexist and misogynist you could think of. She went through all of that. She put up with all of that because she knew she had to put food on the table for the three of us. So I admire her the most. High five. I admire my mom too. My mom is amazing. My mom's the best mom yeah. in the world. High five. Mm -hmm. High five. <laughs> yes.
Yes, and one more thing, my mom is like uh, the same thing as your mom too. Uh, she's also a working woman uh, before, mm -hmm. but uh, right now she's already a pensioner, the pension. And um, mm. and I remember um, when I was growing up, you know, my mom even have to take leave, sometimes have to bring us to the clinic when we're younger, and all the sacrifice that our mothers done to raise us up. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like yeah sacrifices oh. that we didn't yeah. have we didn't have to go through that because they did it for us you know so that we i i mean i have the education that i do because my mom gave it to me so yeah yeah and you owe it entirely to her mm -hmm. i do yeah absolutely Okay, and moving on to the next question, which is the final question for today. What is your advice to the younger generation, the millennials, Gen Z? You know, we had this lovely conversation earlier about being tough, right? And I think that is the one thing, it's, it's, it's hard to describe because on one hand, you have to be super tough, you know, to just get through and to, to, to get what you want. Um, but at the same time, you've got to mix that toughness with a bit of vulnerability, right? You have no choice. Empathy. Because in the world, Passion. empathy and Passion. yes, and yeah. vulnerability. And also, I think women don't, women are hardest on themselves. You know what I mean? We are our harshest critics. Every day in society, we are told we're not good enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not doing enough, we're not good enough mother, we're not good enough sister, we're not good enough daughter not good enough wife, we have these crazy standards to live up to. I'm not saying men don't. Men have their own crazy standards to live up to. But that is not part of the conversation today. And, and I think women as a whole, I would say to younger generation, you have to be tough and smart, but also when to know to ask for help. You know, and don't just bear the burden that you don't have to. You know, reach, reach out to other women, lean on other women, you know, and, and, and don't let anybody shame you for it, you know, there's, yeah, you have to have kindness to yourself, not just to others, you know, um, but at the same time, you can't just lie there and take it, you know, you can't just sit there and say, this is too tough for me, I can't deal with it, I'm just going to run away, you can't do that, you got to keep trying until you can't anymore, and you realize you it comes to a breaking it. point, you have to yeah, and then the if you realize, you have to be exactly, brave, and if you realize, if you, and if you realize that you can't and you can't do this on your own and you've tried the best, then you can seek help, you know? So it's got to be that balance and you've got to be able to have people you trust and to have women around you. If there's one thing I've really come to appreciate the past couple of years is the friendship and company of women. The support system, yeah? Friendship, mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. support system. Yeah. yeah. Pillar. The support of other women. Yeah, yes, the, the support of, of other women. Yeah, exactly. You know, to, to lift each other up, to always respect each other and to, yeah, and to also be able to look at each other and say, babe, you're being a whining, you're being a whiner, you shouldn't be, pick yourself up, get going, you know, and also at the same time, bring tissues when you need them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a delicate balance, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pauline. Thank you so much for sharing no us, you know, your, your feedback and your insight on a Woman Empowerment Series video podcast today. So before we go, do you have any last uh, message, any advice that you would like to share with our viewers? Uh, keep helping each other out. You know, women need to help each other out and to pave the way for other women. If you're a woman and you're in the position to make things easier for another woman, absolutely do so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you're all the way from Belgium and I am in yes. Malaysia, so I'm going to give you a big virtual hug. Hug. <laughs> hug. <laughs> thank you, Pauline. Thank you for thank being you so my woman. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, stay safe, no take problem. care. Bye. <laughs> yes, you too. Bye-bye.